Welcome back to Afternoon Garage. I know what you're saying. That's a Fisker Karma. Shouldn't that be electric? So today we're going to be working on this 2012 Fisker Karma. So if you watched the video last time, talk about how I acquired this vehicle, how I purchased it, and what I went through to buy a vehicle like this. And uh, what you haven't heard is that when I purchased this vehicle, it immediately had a problem. So there really wasn't any place I could take this car to and get it checked out or anything. I just had to pretty much just rely on what the seller told me. Well, if you watched me in a video a few videos back with the Crown Victoria that I was sold with mileage on it that had considerably more mileage than I thought it had and a lot more problems than I thought it had because the seller never told me about it. This is an extreme case of that. So I bought this car on Craigslist. I saw that ad, went out and picked it up and I paid the guy almost full price. Now I drove the car the 250 miles back to the house didn't really find any problems with it. It was running on the gasoline engine pretty much the whole time because it was quite a distance to drive. Didn't really notice anything. In fact, I had a wonderful drive home, took it home, plugged it in, got in it the next day, and I drove it. Well, when I did, everything was fine until I reached about 16, 15 miles, to which point when I accelerated, it lurched forward and then the mileage depleted all the way to zero within seconds. Well, the seller never told me anything about that. But you know what? When you buy a used car, it's kind of what you get. I would have never known about that problem unless I took and drove this car the 35 miles it took to drive it to get it down to 15 miles to where it would fall on its face and the battery would be instantly depleted. I didn't know what was wrong. I bought many cars throughout the years, and I always know, unless you have something in writing, it's as is. So it's pretty much buyer beware. Now, the seller gave me this sheet when I bought it that had all this stuff listed for all these repairs to the tune of over $20,000 for the rear differential and the motors. The reason I felt comfortable buying the car, well, because it had all these receipts for it, it had some major work done, I could see many years trouble-free driving. Well, I continued to drive the car. I had just like a three mile commute to work, so it really wasn't too bad. In fact, I had to charge maybe once every, I don't know, once every week or so. You know, I'd go to work, come back, go to work, come back for four days or so, and then I had to put it on the charge. And I never really let it get below that 15 mile mark. When it did shut off the electric motors and the gas engine kicked in, it was quite violent, the jerk that it would give you forward. So wanted to make sure, not let it get to that point. Well, what happened is progressively it gets worse and worse, as all problems do. And eventually I had a full charge with 50 miles and the thing went all the way down to zero within just to drive down the block. So then I'd come home, plug it in, let it charge. It would take three or four days to finally complete a charge and then I take it out on the road again, get a couple miles on it, would fall on its face, gas engine would kick in. Pretty disgusting. Seems as if I paid a full $60,000 for the car. Didn't want to have this kind of problem happen. I was stuck with it. So now I have to fix this car. You know, I've scanned this car several times. And, uh, well, let's see what the results of that are. Then we'll go OBD2 health check. This isn't going to be located in the database. Codes. So we have a battery energy control module mill requested. Battery pack cell voltage low. And all these undocumented codes here. So just as I thought, it's not going to tell you much of anything. 
except for this is indicating that there's a battery pack issue. Well, now you can see the results by scanning. It, it has a code of P07AB. That's just a generic code to tell you something else is wrong. In fact, you need some other Fisker diagnostic software that costs thousands of dollars that I just don't happen to have. It'll tell you actually what's going on, but that's a battery pack related failure. It's pretty disappointing when you pay $60,000 and you get maybe a year out of driving a car, maybe just 2,000 miles driving this car, and it's broken. But lesson learned, never believe anybody when they sell you a car. That's your best policy ever. Something like this, can't really have it checked out. But if you buy something like this, get into it cheaply. Not like I did at $60,000, which is all the money for this car, even two years ago. So I guess what we have to do now, we have to pull the battery pack out of this thing, see what the hell's wrong with it. I tried to reach out to the gentleman who actually worked on this car and did the $20,000 plus work on the motors and differential. He wasn't very helpful at all. In fact, what I had happen is I had the drive shaft actually fell off after I got the car. I was going down the road and I wasn't going that fast and thank God because what happened is, is the inboard shaft on the drive shaft came disconnected because the bolts were loose and started flopping around in there, made a hell of a noise. I thought in fact the whole car was shot. I didn't know what the heck was wrong and get the car back to the house and I realized that it's got some damage because it sheared some of the bolts off that held the CV axle on. I actually called this guy and said, hey, can you give me an idea on, you know, maybe what you did, what you did to fix it, maybe take some responsibility for this? People don't want to take any responsibility for anything if they don't have to. This guy was very unhelpful to me, so there's no way that I can actually get any information from him as to servicing or maybe some diagnostic stuff or anything like that. He just flat out wouldn't talk to me. So the CSP people, which is what they call customer service program, they don't work with people who work on their own cars. So I have no choice but to do this myself. Looks like I might have to modify my lift here. The distance between here is 33 inches and I believe that the battery pack is 36 inches. So I need about three more inches and I noticed over here that I might be able to slide that runway over three inches, bolt it back on. However, this jack tray is not going to fit anymore. Neither are the drip trays, but that's okay. I'll uh, reposition this one runway. That'll give me an extra three inches, and I think that's about all I need.
Try to make this work on my four post slip. You can see how far the wheel is over. So it's kind of looking like there's a lot involved with this project. Kind of excited to get this car back on the road. So I'll be going over battery removal, the disassembly of the battery pack itself, uh, testing and um, you know repair of the modules. And then I'll go into some failure analysis and figure out exactly why this is such a big problem when you have a single cell fail within the entire battery pack. If you know anybody that has a Fisker or anybody else that would like this kind of content, please just let them know. I need as many subscribers as I can. 96% of my views of the people are unsubscribed. Not really sure why that is, because I have interesting content, and uh, hey, my videos aren't bad either. So if you like it and you're watching it and you're not subscribed, please do so. Till next time.